A Wife in London. In the poem, A Wife in London, Hardy seeks to illuminate the absurdity and tragedy of war, highlighting how war cuts life short needlessly, affecting not just those immediately involved but those back home as well. The poet argues that war is not only tragic but also unnecessary, challenging the belief that war is something noble and heroic. This poem is a tale told in two sections, which concern two very different pieces of communication. In the first section, a wife receives news of her husband's death in battle. In the second, set the next day, she receives a letter from the husband himself. The mismatch in content and timing between the official telegram and the husband's letter develop the poem's central message of war's absurd hopelessness. The poet opens the poem with the line, She sits in the tawny vapor, which directly establishes the feeling of loneliness and isolation. The tawny vapor describes an orange, brown clerd fog which cuts the character off from the rest of the world. It suggests a sense of strangeness and uncanny feeling. With the verb, sits, Hardy uses a passive action to show how the wife's helplessness in her situation and everything is about her husband is outside of her control. The use of the preposition, in, conveys a feeling of being immersed in the fog. The vapor describes a gloomy atmosphere that seems toxic and unpleasant. This can be seen as a use of pathetic fallacy by Hardy to illustrate the feeling of oppression and melancholy. The obscurity of the fog surrounding the wife gestures forwards the similarly murky morality of armed conflict. Hardy continues to convey the idea of inevitability with the line, behind whose webby fold unfold. The adjective webby suggests spider web which connotes a feeling of being trapped. The fricative alliteration, fold on fold, gives the fog a layered, almost suffocating quality, further conveying the inability to escape the war. The feeling of never-ending is also implied with the regular rhyming pattern. With the rhyme scheme being A B B A B C D D C D. It is not altered or changed throughout the poem, which suggests the idea of consistency and regularity, with the never-ending stress about the war. With the use of the simile, like a waning taper, the street lamp is compared to a candle that has almost gone out. The adjective, waning, connotes death which could be hinting at the husband's loss. It also implies that the light of her husband is going out, suggestive of her hopes for the future. The entirety of stanza 1 is in one sentence and is filled with enjambment. This highlights a sense of stasis and the wife's endless waiting which are soon to be contrasted with the sudden interruption in the next stanza. Hardy describes the messenger's action by he, knocks cracks smartly, the harsh, k, sounds of consonants and the assonance of, cracks, and, smartly make the line sound shocking and jarring. With the following line, flashed news is in her hand. The poet depicts a moment when she receives a message that announces her husband's death. The use of the word, flashed, adds to the urgent sounding of the tone. The news is speedy and difficult to take in. She struggles to comprehend the tragic news which she has just been told. In the line, he has fallen in the far south land. The caesura created by the use of dashes in the final line of the stanza perhaps mimics the physical act of reading performed by the wife. The pause after, he, highlights the husband's importance. The wife probably knows what the message is going to say, but can barely bring herself to read it. It also indicates a kind of senselessness to the message, as though its content could be undone by the sentence itself falling apart. The poet also employs euphemism here in the word, fallen. Line 12 is the message that has just been delivered to the wife, and its literal content is the information that the wife's husband is dead. He has been killed at war, and probably died a gruesome, painful death. But that's not how the official speak of the army's letter puts it. The use of, fallen, deliberately underplays the stark horror and tragedy of what has happened. This might be because it somehow sounds more dignified to have, fallen, than to have been killed and also because it delivers the core information without going into any of the gory details, that might further distress the wife. That's a somewhat optimistic interpretation, though. An alternative way of looking at the use of, fallen, is that it tries to euphemistically conceal the horrors of war, with its softening tone making the army, and the politicians that sent them into the conflict, somehow less culpable for what has happened. Here begins the second section of the poem which promises to add the irony to the tragedy of the husband's death. In the line, tis the morrow. The fog hangs thicker. The use of caesura after morrow marks the fact that this is not just a new day, but rather one in which everything has changed. 
The intensity of the fog increases to match the sorrow of the wife's state of mind, again demonstrating pathetic fallacy. As with the first stanza, the two lines here uses consonants to conjure that thickness with program, sounds. What was already a morbid sense of gloom is becoming more and more impenetrable, signifying the way in which the wife is enveloped in her sudden grief. What's more, the verbs, nears, and, goes, that are used in the line about the postman purposefully create a sense that, though the wife is suffering, the world goes on around her with an almost relentless indifference. The postman doesn't stop to talk, only draws near before almost immediately leaving. He is in a hurry, mirroring the way that the world doesn't stop just because one soldier has fallen. There is a contrast, then, between the raw personal grief of the widow and the mundanity going on outside. The pacing here is evidently slower than the messenger in part one of the poem, establishing a moment of irony as the wife receives the news she does not want to hear the fastest but fails to get her letter from her husband quickest. The subject of the poem, the wife and the husband who was fighting the war, are all unnamed characters, as they are referred to as third-person pronouns she and he throughout the poem. This gives a universal feeling that the tragedy and irony can happen with anyone, at the same time displays the anonymity of the people who experience the war, as they are always forgotten. The focus on the wife, rather than the soldier in the title and throughout the poem adds a very emotive and empathetic approach to the subject. Hardy focuses on the lonely, vulnerable and forever hopeful wife who is unable to have any influence or take any action to alter events. Instead, she must wait behind in Britain as her husband fights in a faraway place and has no communication with him because of the obligation of war. The mention of the word, London, in the title reminds us of their physical separation and how detached and removed the war and her husband are. The final stanza deals entirely with the contents of the husband's letter. With the monosyllabic words in the line, fresh firm penned in highest feather, the poet describes the overall tone of his letter as one of good spirits. Highest feather, simply means that the letter has a confident, happy tone. Of course, all of the emotions here are subverted by the tragic news that arrived in advance of the letter. The happiness the husband expresses only deepens the wife's sadness. The alliteration in the first line has an almost absurd lightness to it, contributing to the sense of irony that the section's title advertises. It's also worth noting the way that the punctuation here mirrors that used at the end of the second stanza. The two pieces of communication look quite similar, but they couldn't have more contrasting messages. With the line, page full of his hoped return, Hardy shows that the husband has filled the page with optimistic thoughts of returning home, but the word, hoped, instead ends up standing for the, hopelessness, of the situation. Hoped, and, home, alliterate and are assonant, showing that they are conceptually linked. The husband's hope was linked to his memory of home. Jaunt, is a light word, suggestive of being carefree which, in a way, the husband now is, but at the same time, such lightness now feels impossible to the wife. The alliteration of, break and burn, words which essentially mean, stream, and, greenery, evokes a sense of frivolous fun that is, of course, never to come. The final line, and of new love that they would learn, is key to the poem's meaning, and it is also deliberately ambiguous. This, new love, that the husband mentions might refer to his expectations about how things will be when they are reunited. It'll be a new kind of love because it will be heightened by the fact that he has come back from war. Some critics also suggest that the line might imply that the wife is pregnant and that the new love will be as parents for a child, but there isn't enough evidence here to make that claim conclusively. The most likely and most depressing meaning of the line, though not the meaning the husband intended, is that the new love to be learnt is the wife's. She will have to get used to love her husband in the past tense as a widow. This conclusion indicates that the senseless tragedy of war subverts all good things, even something as pure as a wife's love for her husband. Although the event of receiving the message about her husband's death is key and conveys a striking message about the futility of war, it is the bitter and upsetting arrival of the letter he wrote afterwards that is the crux of the poem. Through this irony, Hardy wants to emphasize the inhumanity, hypocrisy and subjectivity of conflict. It is also ironic that the war is never named. Similarly, the circumstances of his death, or what he was fighting for, is never conveyed. This helps communicate how removed the war was from the lives and priorities of the British people. It gives the idea that the soldiers died needlessly and for no reason or benefit for the British nation. The poem follows a regular rhyme of A B B A B C D D C D and so on.
This regular rhyming pattern is not altered or changed in each of the four stanzas, giving the idea of inevitability, consistency and regularity. Therefore, it helps to emphasize how the needless deaths of British soldiers and the devastation of loved ones and families were inevitable. Messages being delivered to homes across Britain of husbands, brothers, fathers and sons dying in South Africa were being delivered consistently and regularly. The unchanging rhyme also gives the idea of hopelessness and never-ending loss and suffering as the uniformity gives the impression that nothing can be done to alter these events. Historical Context a Wife in London was written in response to the Boer War. This was a conflict that took place in what is now referred to as South Africa and lasted from 1899 to 1902. It was euphemistically called, the last of the gentlemen's wars, but it was anything but. British forces fought with groups antagonistic to British rule, and total casualties amounted to 60,000 people. Hardy himself was suspicious of the empire's involvement in the area believing it to be in large part due to the rich resources of the land, especially gold. More recent scholarship has highlighted the controversial use of concentration camps by the British in the war. In fact, most of the more than 25,000 Afrikaners imprisoned in these camps died due to starvation and disease. The wider context of the Boer War is the Victorian era, during which the British Empire exerted far-reaching control over much of the globe. For some, this was a source of pride. Others, like Hardy, were more critical. 